On this adventure, we discuss using motion control for both live action video and time-lapse production. And we'll also discuss how to create fun multi-pass VFX effects. Motion control for both video and time lapse has only recently made it to the mainstream consumer market in the past seven or eight years. It used to be you had to spend tens of thousands of dollars to achieve a cinema look, but now you can do that for only a fraction of the cost. When you use motion control in your video, you're enabling yourself to craft the image and the scene as you see fit, with all the camera movements and scene directions already set up and good to go. This allows you as a cinematographer and time lapse photographer to really create an image that tells a more dynamic and enriching story. It's also great if you're filming interviews and are working by yourself or with a limited team. Here are a few examples of how adding motion control to your work can help amplify the overall composition and feel of the shot. The pushover. This type of shot defies gravity and makes it appear as if your camera is floating over the edge of the scene. Because the camera is mounted to a solid stationary slider, it can create a beautiful left to right movement that looks truly cinematic. The rise. This is one of my favorite types of moves to make because it allows the camera to rise as if it's on a jib and it gives you a really fun and neat perspective rather than just a stationary shot. The reveal. This type of motion control is often used in establishing shots for TV and film when you want to come off an object and reveal what the ultimate location is. The push. The push is one of my favorite moves to use in the motion control world because it gives the viewer a sense of movement and stability that can only be found when using a track or a fixed gimbal. It moves the viewer through space and time. The parallax. This type of movement is most commonly used for interviews and sweeping landscape shots. It creates an effect where the foreground and background move opposite the direction of the camera, which makes the scene look much more dynamic and complex, especially when you're able to control the camera's pan to run opposite that of the slide. Let's go ahead and talk about setup. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and set up for our motion control shots. I'm gonna be using the Kessler Cine Shooter. It's something I've been using for a while now. What I really like about it is that it has five axis capability. It means that I can control both the pan, the slide, the tilt, as well as the focus zoom. Uh, and now we also have the ability to do a roll axis, um, which really allows you to just have more capabilities when it comes to creating beautiful time-lapse or motion video. When it comes to setting up motion control shots, I usually like to use very wide lenses, especially in a landscape situation, because it's gonna give you the most range. And the way that we have this set up is we're gonna be able to capture all of the beautiful foreground that's right in front of the camera, as well as all of the beautiful background. And when we do this, it's gonna create a very dynamic scene where we have that foreground, middle ground, background, and we're also creating a parallax motion, which is when one motion is going this way and another is going that way, um, it creates a much more fulfilling scene. Um, and it's something that I really think um, helps amplify and uh, just elevate the, the shot in general. One thing when you're setting up your shot is you wanna look for foreground objects that are very close to the camera. This is what's really gonna help uh, give it that depth when you're shooting. And over here, I've got some really nice uh, tree brush as well as the, the river bank. And then on the, the middle ground, we have the, the water. And this is really gonna allow you to create that beautiful dynamic shot. Leveraging foreground objects are a must. The farther away objects are when you're using the slider, the less perspective motion you'll see in the shot. The closer foreground objects are to the camera and to the slider, the more perspective motion you'll see, which is ultimately what you want. In this example, you can see the camera move from left to right, while the camera lens tracks the opposite direction from right to left, which helps create that parallax feeling because we're so close to the foreground objects. With any production, especially when using motion control, it's often a great idea to bring backup in the forms of friends or hired hands. <laughs> it's so helpful to have additional people helping you because if you're doing this by yourself, I mean, you're probably gonna have to set the tripods by themselves. You can't keep the unit attached together. Uh, and just having more people with you, more hands, it just makes the work so much easier. And more rewarding too, because Nate here is doing a great job. <laughs> Watch, <your foot. laughs> Watch my foot. Perfect. Boom, set up, ready to rock and roll. Not so bad. Not so bad. 
So I wanna make this a reveal shot. We're gonna to have to put the camera very close to this aspen tree over here because what I wanna have happen is I want the camera to uh, track from left to right to reveal the beautiful landscape we have in the background. And to do that, I'm gonna be shooting in a 24 millimeter lens uh, or 24 millimeter uh, in general. And we're gonna have it pushed up as close to the tree as we can. That way when it does pop out, it's just gonna be this really cool, spectacular reveal of the landscape. If you want to go for something truly unique in the consumer grade motion control world, you can attach a magic arm to your mocha rig like so. For this motion control move, we're going to do something a little different and it's not necessarily the right way to do it, but it actually creates a really cool thing. And I'm using a Manfrotto magic arm and I've attached the Alpha 1 with the 12 to 24 to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually push through the scene and by doing so, it's going to look like the camera is floating through the scene with the time lapse. Um, and it's great because you won't actually see the track in the shot. A tip when you're using the Manfrotto magic arm or any kind of extended arm like this is to make sure that the shutter speed doesn't really go over one second because even though it looks like it is supported, there's the potential to have any kind of wind or interference bounce the shot. And if you are dragging the shutter or you have a long shutter speed, um, you're going to see that in the shot. So I'm only using a 0.8 second shutter speed right now, so I can still drag it just a little bit to create some of that motion blur. But if you do it too much, what's going to happen is um, you're going to see that in the shot. There's any kind of uh, movement from the wind or uh, anything else. So um, don't go too long on your shutter speed when you're using the Manfrotto Magic Arm. We did have a storm roll in, so in this example, the shot didn't really turn out that well. However, here's another example of how we use the Magic Arm in another shot, and it worked really great. Sometimes the simplest moves can often be the most effective. In this scenario, I'm shooting a full 360 degree spin using the pan axis with the 12 to 24 set to 12 millimeters, which offers a spectacular view of the trees surrounding the camera. I've also moved the LCD screen on the A1 into a position so I can easily frame up my shot. One thing to remember when you're using a motion control slider is to make sure the unit is always secure. One of the biggest don'ts when it comes to motion control safety is to never use a MoCo rig with a single tripod. It could end up costing you thousands of dollars. If you put too much of a heavy payload, uh, just using a single post uh, tripod like this, it's just gonna topple over. So I'm just gonna do this and you'll see that we've got so much weight and it's actually starting to bend. And what can happen is you can actually have it detach right from here uh, and you don't want that. And we don't have any, any camera on here, so we're actually about six pounds lighter uh, than we normally would be. So um, this is a big don't because you don't wanna have any of your gear damaged um, when you're doing a slider move. Now, the way to remedy this is you can either use uh, two different tripods or you can put two support stands right underneath so that they comes up and you can actually see it supporting that motion control rig. One of the last things we'll discuss is how to do a multi-pass motion control move. It's a very simple thing to do, but definitely requires a bit of planning and creativity. In this example, we're going to be combining both live action and time lapse together in a motion controlled move. To start, we need to create three different types of plates for this shot to work. The first shot will be our subject out of the frame. The next will be a time lapse shot we'll use for the background of the frame. And the last will be a shot of our subject in the frame. When you layer all three plate shots together in post, you'll be able to mask out certain portions of the scene so that it looks like it's been merged together to create one single surreal scene. This type of scene can only be created though if you're using a precision, repeatable, motion controlled slider. That's it for this reframe. Thanks for watching.